got to tell you, I'm sure glad that spring's right around the corner, uh, getting a little tired of the cold and the rain, but uh, uh, we're having really quite nice weather for uh, February and now we're looking forward to even better weather in March. Uh, we uh, certainly are appreciative of the change of seasons, which we missed so much in Florida and uh, have been enjoying them here, but uh, we're kind of glad when they change from season to season. We've been looking at Job as he responds to Bildad and the others. Uh, Bildad spoke way back in chapter 25, and he only spoke six verses before he was either interrupted or said all he wanted to say. But Job has now been responding for six chapters, 151 verses, and he continues today in chapter 29 and chapter 30. And we want to cover both of those today. But again, I'm going to try to be brief. <laughs> uh, Job first in chapter 29 speaks about his happy past. And uh, he talks about the good old days when God watched over him and when everything was going so well. And God did so many wonderful things in his life and he was respected by man. In chapter 30, he goes on and he says that he wants to be sure that he vents about his present humiliation, that he was mocked, he was taunted, he cried out and it didn't seem like God was answering. Uh, he was persecuted and he just uh, complains for 24 verses about how bad things are in the present and uh, certainly he has had more than most of us will ever experience. Nevertheless, uh, he says that uh, he, he needs to remember uh, the affliction and the fact that even his flesh is rotting on his bones and uh, wants to vent about that. So he does that for almost 24 verses. Now, what can we learn and what can we apply to our lives from Job's 29 and 30 chapters. Uh, well, I think that first of all, it's good to reflect on the past. I think it's good to occasionally remember the past, to thank God for all of his blessings and for the good events that have occurred in life. I remember when my dad was in his last couple of weeks of life uh, that he told me, he says, Pete, don't cry for me. I've done things that most people just dream about doing. I've traveled the world. Uh, I've had a good life. Uh, I've had a good family, and uh, uh, I'm ready to go. But uh, don't cry for me because I've done things that most people dream about doing. So I think it's okay to think back on the past. The danger is, of course, you can't live there. You can't dwell on the past. You can learn from the past, you can enjoy the memories of the past, but you can't live there. Secondly, I think we can apply this to our lives when we think about the fact that uh, when we get to chapter 30, that it's okay to vent. Uh, the one thing you don't want to do is become bitter. And uh, again, you can't live there. You can't dwell on the present dilemma. Uh, which brings me to the third point, which is we need to praise God for the future. No matter how bad things are right now, uh, God's got something better for us. If it's not here on earth, it's our heavenly home as long as you know Christ is your Savior. And it's going to be a place where there'll be no more tears and no more sorrow, no more pain and no more suffering. For those things will have all passed away. The book of Revelation tells us that. So if you're going through trials, maybe they're not as deep as Job's, or maybe they're deeper than Job's. But if you're going through trials, think about the future. If you've accepted Christ as your Savior, you have a wonderful future ahead. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.